Elon Musk explains what stock he'd invest in if he couldn't pick any of his own. What? <laughs> Check this out. If you were a stock investor, Elon, <laughs> <laughs> and you could buy one company which is not your own at the valuations of today to meet a capitalistic end and not an altruistic one which is good for the world, what would you buy? Um, I mean, I don't really, I don't really you know, buy stocks, you know, so it's not like, uh, I'm not, I'm not like an investor in, I don't like look for things to invest in. I just try to build things. Um, and then there happens to be stock of the company that I built. Um, but I, I don't, I don't think about, should I invest in this company or I don't have like a portfolio or anything, I guess. Um, AI and robotics are going to be very important. So, I suppose it would be AI and robotics that, that you know, aren't related to me. Um, I think you know Google is going to be pretty valuable in the future. They, they've they've laid the groundwork for an immense amount of uh, value creation from an AI standpoint. Um, and Nvidia is obvious at this point. Um, I mean, there's an argument that. Companies that do AI and robotics and maybe space flight are going to be overwhelming, overwhelmingly the, all the value, almost all the value. So the, just the, the output of goods and services from AI and robotics is so high that it will dwarf everything else. Elon Musk just explained why he only builds companies and why AI and robotics will capture almost all the value in the future. Elo revealed something fundamental about how he operates. He doesn't buy stocks, but just happens to be stock of the companies he's built. He flat out said he doesn't really buy stocks and he's not like an investor looking for things to invest in. He tries to build things. So why does this matter? When you're a builder, you think completely differently than when you're an investor. Investors spread their money across lots of different companies. They diversify, they hedge their bets. Builders put everything into one thing. They go all in and research backs this up. Companies ran by their founders perform way better than companies ran by professional managers. One of the main reasons among other things is how deeply the founder cares about what they're building. When you found a company, you're fighting for something. You saw a problem in the world that made you angry or you felt needed solving. You believed customers or people were getting screwed and you wanted to fix it. That fire drives everything you do. Professional managers don't have that fire. They have quarterly targets and bonus structures. The owner mindset means you treat every dollar like it's your own money. Because it's your own money, you hate wasting it. You hate bureaucracy because bureaucracy burns money without creating value. You move fast because slow means you're burning cash while your competitors are building. Founder-led companies take a different approach to betting. They'll test a bunch of ideas, but when they find something that works, they go all in. Big companies do the opposite. They test a bunch of ideas, they keep testing, they spread small amounts of money across everything instead of backing the winner. Founders see the whole business. They don't think about departments or territories. A sales problem is their problem. An engineering problem is their problem. A customer service problem is their problem. They see how everything connects because they built every piece of it. Founders also know how to focus. They say no to almost everything. They cut products, they kill projects, they stay narrow, because they understand that doing one thing extremely well beats doing 10 things okay. Without that focus, you can't be the best. You're just average at everything. Lots of research proves this pattern. Companies grow and achieve scale. That's the goal, right? Get big, but when they get big, they lose what made them special. They add layers of management. They create processes. They hire executives from other big companies. Those executives bring playbooks from business school and slowly the company becomes slow and complex. Growth stalls out. They can't respond fast anymore. Smaller, faster competitors start winning. Most of the big swings in company value up or down happen during these rare phases. Only a tiny number of companies successfully grow to massive scale while keeping that founder energy. Most lose it. Elon says he doesn't think like an investor tells you why Tesla and SpaceX work differently. He's building things he believes will change everything. Electric cars that actually work rockets that land themselves, brain-computer interfaces, digging tunnels under cities. That singular focus creates something professional managers can't replicate. You can't fake passion. 
You can't manufacture that level of commitment. The founder mindset means you're willing to bet everything. You'll work 100 hours a week. You'll risk your own money. You'll ignore everyone telling you it's impossible. The fire either burns in you or it doesn't. Companies that keep that fire while they scale become the ones that dominate for decades. They achieve sustained profitable growth year after year because they never lost what made them great in the first place. They stayed insurgents even after they won. So that's why Elon focuses on building instead of investing. But let's dive into his conviction on AI and robotics. Quick plug, if parts of this AI and robotics stuff feel confusing, we've put together a course that explains everything from start to finish. It's built for people who follow this channel and want to understand exactly what's going on under the hood of AI. There's a link in the description if you want lifetime access. Elon's prediction is that companies that do AI and robotics will capture almost all the value. He thinks Google's going to be very valuable in the future because they've laid the groundwork and Nvidia is also obvious at this point. So why is Elon so bullish on this? Right now, today, the AI and robotics technology we already have could automate more than half of all work hours in America. That's current technology. We could do this now if we deployed it everywhere. Work in the future is going to look completely different. You have people working alongside AI assistants and robots. The AI handles the repetitive stuff, the robots do the physical labor, the humans focus on creative problem solving and decision making. That combination produces way more output than humans working alone. A factory worker today might assemble parts for eight hours. They get tired, they make mistakes when they're tired, they need breaks, they need lunch, they go home at the end of their shift. A robot doing that same job works continuously. No breaks, no lunch, no sleep, perfect precision every single time. The robot produces maybe five or 10 times more output than the human worker. Now multiply that across millions of jobs, manufacturing, logistics, warehouses, food services, customer support, the productivity gains become enormous. Companies can produce more goods with fewer people. That sounds bad for workers, but when productivity explodes, costs collapse. When costs collapse, prices drop. When prices drop, more people can afford to buy things. When more people buy things, demand increases. When demand increases, companies need more workers to handle the growth. But those workers do different jobs. They're not assembling parts, they're programming the robots. They're maintaining the systems. They're handing out the edge cases that AI can't figure out. The demand for automation is surging right now. Businesses face real problems. Labor costs keep rising. Workers are expensive. Healthcare costs, pay time off, training, turnover, and there aren't enough workers. Birth rates are dropping. Populations are aging. In 20 years, there might not be enough people to fill all the jobs that need filling. AI and robotics solve both problems at once. They reduce labor costs because robots don't need healthcare or retirement plans. And they fill the worker shortage because one robot can do the work of multiple people. The technology keeps getting better too. Machine learning means these systems actually learn from experience. They get smarter over time. Computer vision means robots can see and understand their environment. Natural language processing means they can talk to humans in plain English. These capabilities were science fiction 10 years ago. Now they're standard. The shift to smart factories is happening fast. Companies are investing massive amounts of money into digital transformation. They're rebuilding their entire operating systems around AI and robotics. Every major industry is doing this. Automotive, electronics, pharmaceuticals, food production. Nobody wants to be the last company still doing things the old way. Labor shortages accelerate everything. Countries with aging populations face a crisis. Japan, South Korea, China, there literally won't be enough working age people to keep their economies running. Robots become necessary, not optimal. You either automate or your economy shrinks. And the way these systems connect will multiply their power. Internet of Things means every device talks to every other device. Your robot on the factory floor talks to the inventory system. The inventory system talks to the shipping system. The shipping system talks to the supplier network. Everything synchronizes in real time. When something breaks, the system knows immediately. It orders the replacement part. It schedules the maintenance. It reroutes production to other machines. All automatic. No humans needed to coordinate any of it. That's the level of efficiency that was impossible years ago. Smart manufacturing shows this clearly. Robots communicate with each other. They coordinate their work. If one robot falls behind, the others adjust their pace. If a quality issue appears, every robot updates its processes immediately. 
The whole system learns and adapts as a unit. Applications go way beyond factories. Smart cities use robots for surveillance, maintenance and logistics. Delivery robots bring packages to your door. Cleaning robots maintain public spaces. Security robots patrol at night. All of this frees up humans to do more valuable work. Agriculture is transforming too. Robots plant seeds, they monitor crop health, they harvest at the perfect time. They sort production by quality, all with precision that humans can't batch. The physical labor that broke farmers' backs for thousands of years gets automated away. Healthcare benefits enormously. Robots assist in surgery with steadier hands than any human surgeon. They deliver medication in hospitals. They help elderly people with daily tasks. AI analyzes medical images faster and more accurately than radiologists, not to replace them, but to make doctors more effective. When you can automate more than half of all work hours, when robots operate continuously with perfect precision, when systems learn and improve on their own, you're changing the entire game. New jobs get created too. Somebody needs to program these robots. Somebody needs to maintain them. Somebody needs to train AI. Somebody needs to handle the situations that are too complex for automation. The nature of work shifts. More technical, more creative, less repetitive, less dangerous. Energy, AI, and robotics create a powerful cycle. Better robots use energy more efficiently. Cheaper energy makes robots more economical to run. Better AI makes robots and energy systems smarter. Each improvement reinforces the other. The cycle speeds up over time. Robots becoming more capable means they can do more jobs. That creates more value. More value means more money to invest in better robots. Better robots means more capabilities. The flywheel spins faster and faster. When Elon says the output will dwarf everything, he's looking at this pattern. Technologies that can automate the majority of economic activity expand what's possible. They create entirely new categories of goods and services that couldn't exist before. The world with millions of robots working alongside AI produces vastly more stuff than a world where humans do everything manually. More food, more manufactured goods, more services, more of everything. The total size of the economy could be several times larger than it is today. The companies that master AI and robotics will capture most of the value because they own the technology everyone else needs. If you're the company that makes the robots or the AI that powers them or the chips that run the AI, you're selling to every other company in the world. That's why Elon said these companies have almost all the value. They're selling the tools that power every industry. Most people pour money into ads people ignore. YouTube changes that, it builds trust, authority, and a real connection at scale. One law firm we worked with landed 33 clients in just five months worth $330,000 from their YouTube channel. If you run a business, this is one of the most overlooked opportunities right now. Book a call with me below and I can show you how we can make it happen.